Hello everybody, Waffle Time here. In another unorthodox way of starting a video, allow me, Papa Waffle, to slap a lick of knowledge into your slightly sweaty gamer bodies. As early as at least 600,000 years ago in our human history, our ancestors hunted with spears fashioned by hand. Now hypothetically speaking, let's say we're zapped back into time with only spears to hunt our average run-of-the-mill wildlife in order to survive. Some of us would make it. Some of us certainly, certainly wouldn't. Now, what if I told you we were teleported 600,000 years into the past with only a spear to defend ourselves not only against mere wildlife, wildlife, but also, you know, an occasional small little, maybe tiny sprinkle of eldritch deities with a knack for exploding humans with flying eyeballs. Yes, yes, not only would not one of us survive, I'm sure it goes without saying, that we would all certainly be degraded extensively. Well today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the answer to your burning question. Can you beat Terraria with spears only, or will you succumb to the moral and emotional degradation that Master Mode Terraria hand delivers straight to your doorstep? Before we jump in, I want to make it clear that I will not be spawning in with a spear, but we'll try and get one as soon as possible. Possible, then as soon as I have one, it's nothing but spears from that moment forth. I'll also be using Fargo's mutant mod simply for convenience, as well as a couple others, which I'll put down in the description if you're interested. Let's jump right in, shall we? We do as any pro gamer in their right goddamn state of mind should do and immediately begin chopping the ever-loving hell out of some trees with absolutely no regard to the deforestation and pollution policies around here. We need to complete our gamer goals, which are getting a goddamn spear and building some NPC housing and a measly forest and habitat for wildlife being decimated is a small price to pay for our own benefit in succulent, succulent game progression. Having this said, we quickly crank some crisp 90s on our NPC housing and set out to find ourselves a spear. If you all didn't know already, much like boomerang, spears are found in those dumpsters which are often confused for surface chests, containing various pieces of garbage suitable for our very own special little spears only occasion. While collecting cactus for cactus armor, I am genuinely and reasonably surprised to find our first death was not to a blue slime this time, no, 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 no. We die instead to a vulture. The world suddenly feels off balance to me and something will go extremely wrong really really soon, mark my words. It's at this point that we're getting shell shock, war flashbacks, thinking of how fucking long it took us to find a boomerang last playthrough when suddenly, out of the clear blue, nearly instantly we find ourselves a spear. This is absolutely astounding, groundbreaking news and here I was thinking that we'd be searching the entire galaxy for one of these bad boys. We will name it Britney Spear and god damn it we will be toxic, perhaps even hitting it baby one more motherfucking time. We keep on exploring for a while, find some potions as well as some much needed useless fucking beach loot. We grab plenty of ores, gems, then die to the small, bouncy, disease-ridden flinks. Really? To a flinks? Really? We head back home unwillingly, yet again, and upgrade our beautiful little crack den with new crafting stations as well as ample chest storage. After this, we immediately charge out to do some more exploration and to test out our Britney Spear, which if you couldn't notice already is not too fucking shabby. We can occasionally actually get two hits if the spear is placed just right, juggling our enemies and giving us a god complex that would surely, surely collapse directly onto us and those around us as soon as one small, minor inconvenience occurs. We find some climbing claws, then Dwayne the Rock Johnson hits us with the fucking ultra super slam rock bottom diving crossbody shoulder breaker and thus, yet again, sends us to explore elsewhere. Un willingly. We manage to grab ourselves a step stool that somehow, some way is menacing. Oh fuck, not menacing enough however because we've been disemboweled by a small bat that can do an ungodly amount of fucking damage to our bodies. It's gonna be one of these playthroughs isn't it? It's gonna be one of these fucking playthroughs. I'm losing it already. We then keep pushing our way over to the oceans because a quick and efficient weapon upgrade we could get very early on would be directly to the trident which could be found in water chests and would boost our power from 8 to 14 compensating for any physical attribute of ourselves that may seem unfavorable to the vast majority of the population, but instead is average. So you know, we're not really compensating because it's av- Found one! Okay. Yeah! Trident. Once we have our brand spanking new weapon, we hit the underground ice biome in order to- Okay. We hit the underground ice biome in order to collect plenty of ores and loot. Eventually, we stumble across a shroom biome. How wacky. How warpy. We get ourselves a cloud in a bottle, plenty of life crystals, as well as shoe spikes. Since we're happy and we want to feel it for more than three second intervals at a time, we teleport up before we could be absolutely ass blasted by the various wacko ass creatures that lie beneath. Thank god we're up here now, where we can sell our loot in peace without disgusting abominations trying to attack us constantly. That would certainly- Blood Moon! Woo! We are struggling through the Blood Moon when something so beautiful, so pristine happens. As I slay a creature, I see the angelic, holy silhouette of a shark tooth necklace fall directly into our grubby little gamer hands. Well, I'll be fucked. I am very pleasantly surprised with this. There simply has to be some type of catch. Perhaps this is just a regular human tooth necklace which doesn't give you any buffs or armor penetration. Maybe it just makes you have an existential crisis and not be able to sleep at night because you can't stop thinking of who these teeth belong to. Anyways, all human teeth necklaces 
forces aside, we make ourselves a elevator, make ourselves some bits of silver armor, then dive on down our elevator to- <sighs> Then dive on down our elevator to get some good loot. We get a mace, fucking wonderful. We get Hermes boots, fucking wonderful. After some more exploring, we head back up and finish up our silver armor set and upgrade our tools as well so we're stacked beyond measure. Anyways, in the name of keeping what little shred of dignity and sanity we have left, if any at all, we go on to make an invasion mob farm up near our spawn so we don't have to worry about it down the road. And I must say, we are smart, sexy, and strategic as a motherfuck for not waiting until STD-ridden goblins and pirates show up to sex us up. That way, when they show up, they try and sex a shallow layer of lava up instead of us, which is just incredibly ideal for our cause. Remember that little shred of sanity? and or dignity that I mentioned earlier that we may or may not have from doing these godless, lifeless playthroughs? Well, about that, this motherfucker has come to mouth breathe on us with maximum force and we are not happy about it one bit. It is clear, apparent, and obvious that he hasn't even seen a toothbrush in well over two weeks, as his breath seemingly does poison damage to anyone within a 10-yard radius of him. On the contrary, we try to stab him for his heinous crimes, which truly remind us of how hellish this Spears-only playthrough is gonna be when we can't even seem to land a goddamn motherfucking hit. I'm, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. Always practice good hygiene. Don't be like Bitch Boy who has officially made his way onto our going to fucking stab to death list. We charge into the crimson on one hour of sleep, no breakfast, and a fucking dream, baby. Because we want to upgrade our weapon to a The Rotted Fork, beautifully boosting our power from a wimpy little 14 to a massive 14. I know. Insane, right? Positively mind-boggling. No, no, you silly little rascals. What we were really going for are these bad boys. The heroes of the hentais. In order to not get hentied ourselves, we scream and cry and piss our pants and eventually make it down to our little coward pyramid, where we sulk, slightly embarrassed of our prior reaction in the eye of the public and wait for the event to be over with. Ah, uh, nice and relaxing. It's moments like these that grow my hair back just a tiny bit on my absolutely shined, bald head which I obtained from playthroughs just like these. Now that the hentai champions have been melted down into nothingness, we look for a goblin tinkerer who happened to be getting cucked in a snow biome as he rightfully goddamn should, simply serving as a punishment for how much of our future funds are going to be spent reforging something to brisk five times in a row. We reluctantly free him, then go on to make NPC housing in the desert for the arms dealer and nurse, who are most definitely, without a doubt in my mind, going to be making a lot of content for the hub while we aren't around. Then make a dank little cobweb-covered dusty cuck cave for the goblin tinkerer to serve out the rest of his sentence in. After we leave the bitch boy goblin to his own regrettable and marriage-destroying fetishes, we check out the underground jungle for some hopefully good loot, and are greeted immediately with yet another cloud in a bottle, yet another mace, a boomstick which, surprise, we can't fucking use, another motherfucking mace, a staff of regrowth, I guess, then a man-eater who lives up to the expectations of his name and absolutely eats us. This actually brings up a very enticing theory I've been putting together all by myself. So get this, I am a man and he just ate us. Its name is man-eater. Hypothetically speaking, this man-eater just ate a man which may even lead to why it's called a man-eater. Get it now? Checkmate, liberals. Yes, yeah, so what, leftists? Sometimes I use my right hand to jerk off. I gotta switch it up every now and again. It's our American goddamn right to switch it up sometimes. It's in the Bill of Rights somewhere, I think. We go back and are instantly greeted with a fucking flare gun, then are actually pleasantly surprised when we find some feral claws, which eases the pain of the countless amounts of chests that were utterly and entirely useless to us that we discovered. We get various other useless bits of loot, various other deaths, and eventually give up on trying to find an anklet of the wind and instead prepare for the Eye of Cthulhu. That's right, we are officially in what I like to call fuck it mode. We make ourselves a quick row of platforms as an arena, slam some buffs, then summon the mouth-breathing plaque cesspool. We promptly begin stabbing him to death and see we are actually doing decent damage, and can even double hit him with the spear whenever he's charging us. However, where this wasn't the most chill situation of all time was the second phase where I was getting one hit per two years, as he was in super fucking meltdown mode because someone offered him a mint. We slowly but surely chip away at his health, discreetly holding our armor ever so slightly over our nose so we don't smell this unsanitary disease foul gamer breath smell. Eventually, after a lot of running in an absolutely ass-clenching final phase, we managed to squeak out our first epic goddamn gamer dub. Life is good, because now we have the Shield of Cthulhu giving us the power of the Eye of Cthulhu's gamer breath to use on other mobs for a change. After our striking and sexy victory against the Eye, we begin to build up some more NPC housing and take some time to brew up a game plan for the Brain of Cthulhu. You see, I already know this is going to be an absolute anal polyp of a battle, so my game plan, as demonstrated here in this beautiful 
beautifully crafted handmade illustration made by me. We summon the big brainosy. We use stick to poke brainosy eyeballs. Eyeballs no like stick. We die. Take tissue from eyeball. Mind Satan lava rock. Make cool, sexy, shiny new armor. Poke brainosy and win over the dryad's heart in order to finally lose our virginity. I mean, celebrate our victory and bask in the good loot. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was uh, uh, autocorrect. Yeah, uh, autocorrect. With our game plan set in stone, we go ahead and lightly reforge our gear, grab our buffs, then head over to the crimson. Crimson, more like crim spiders every two fucking seconds. God damn it. Stop, 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 stop. Now that our arena is made, we go on to break the last heart, drink our buff potions, and start spearing for our fucking lives. We manage to catch the eyeballs in a spot that is detrimental for their well-being as they were closely grouped together. So we stab the ever-loving fuck out of them and try and dodge the brain, killing as many eyes as we can before we die. This is... this is actually going really fucking well. Huh. We managed to get every last one of the eyes to my absolute shock and are charged by the big bad brain ussy itself. It is an excruciatingly slow process, but by paying attention to the minimap we are able to take minimal damage. Emotionally and mentally I am hanging on by a thread, but for this battle we're actually doing surprisingly well physically. Eventually, to my absolute disbelief, we managed to kill us a brain of Cthulhu on the first try. That certainly was not supposed to happen. I digress, with the brain ussy being conquered and donned entirely on accident we upgrade our pickaxe and go down to collect a rather unholy amount of obsidian. Then go even further into the depths of hell to collect molten satan lava rock. That's right, you heard correctly, we go on yet another epic gamer hellstone mowing session and collect as much as humanly possible. Ignoring the occasional <laughs> you forgot empress of light comment flying our way from the depths of hell. Forgot? More like avoided entirely you nincom fucking poop. Anyways, we gather up all the hellstone possible to make our way up top to make ourselves a brand new sexy set of gucci hellstone armor. We also upgrade our tools before taking another look at our are going to fucking stab to death list and see that Skeletron is up next. It's time to test out our new armor and really see how much damage we could do against this tremendous nobody have an ass bone master. This flying boner is going to feel the wrath of a thousand suns when we take our spear and lodge it directly into our own foreheads, apparently. Fuck! We do a little bit more reforging to save face from that unsexy version of public humiliation we just encountered then head back to the dungeon to give it another spin. We slowly but surely chip away at the health of his two ultra turbo master grippers of hands, making sure we keep him around the same health so that he can't start blasting skulls at us for some odd unknown reason until we're ready for it. Eventually, to many fetishizing strange people's dismay, we take out his gargantuan hands and are left with nothing but head. Our true only goal here is to not get head from Skeletron, that is certainly the last thing we would want in this situation as it would be exponentially detrimental to our health and well-being. At this point, the fight is extremely slow but is steady at the same time considering we could walk at one mile per hour and stab him to death while he's trying to 360 no-scope us and put us on a 2012 phase trick scoping montage. Slowly but surely, we spear away his health and eventually take him out entirely. And I must tell you, life simply could not be better as a spear master because now we have access to a weapon that's gonna last us for the rest of pre-hard mode, the Dark Lance. Now, the funny thing about the Dark Lance is that we need to open open shadow chests in the depths of hell in order to get it. Unfortunately, however, we need to obtain the key to open the locked shadow chest from the golden chest that lie in the dungeon. Unfortunately, however, we need to get golden keys from fighting mobs in the dungeon in order to unlock the golden chest to get the shadow key to unlock the shadow chests. That's fucked up, I think. No matter, however, as we want to get ourselves a cobalt shield as well, but still, super fucked up. Off the bat, we get ourselves a cobalt shield, which is excellent. We then get a stupid magic missile, a fucking yo-yo that would have been so goddamn convenient in our yo-yos only playthrough and decides to show up now instead of then, and at long last get ourselves a shadow key. Whew, thank god we don't have to sit in here and look for chests anymore to progress. Now we can finally go down to hell and look for some loot and chests in order to progress. God damn it. Okay, alright, we all know this is going to be an existential nightmare beyond measure, so let's just fucking, let's just fucking get it out of the way. Stupid fucking magnet. Stupid fucking magnet. A flower. Another fucking flower. Another flower. Stupid fucking magnet. Magnet hell. Sell everything. Hell wing bow, which would have been very, very nice in another playthrough when I actually need it. Another goddamn Hellwing bow. Another Hellwing bow. Goddamn magnet. And at long last, a Dark Lance. Thank God. With this Dark Lance in our tool belt, we have officially boosted our power from a lame-brained ass 14 to a Chad Von Thundercock tier 29. We sell off the remaining loot clogging our inventory that serves literally no purpose to us whatsoever that we obtained from Hell. Then charge directly and immediately into the jungle in order to take on Queen P, the ultimate Karen of the jungle, who supposedly calls the police on kids who are harmlessly selling candy bars outside of Walmart to fundraise for their youth sports team. With this information steaming in our heads, we know that the only true 
true answer for someone as vile and volatile as this is a spear directly into their L7 vertebrae. We eventually find a hive and make a quick arena for what we can only hope will be a quick boss battle and summon her ass on up. We begin dark lancing the ever loving piss out of the queen pea and see that we are just absolutely crushing her. She is pulling out absolutely everything in her arsenal to stop us but we have a retort for it all. Calling the cops on us we have a permit to be lugging around this absolute dump truck of an ass. Trying to cancel us on Twitter? Not apologizing. Don't care. Didn't even ask. Trying to talk to our managers? We are the fucking managers you loathsome imbecilic treacherous hemorrhoid. She's entirely out of options and has literally no other choice but to fold, die, and post something stupid that no one cares about on her snapchat story. Only real ones know. Don't hit me up. Signing off. I don't feel bad at all. She deserved it and none of you can convince me otherwise. Having that battle settled and set in stone, we have one final boss of free hard mode before we can feel another tasty lick of game progression. And that, my friends, is the wall of flesh. Now, if you're not a new and fresh face to these certain weapons only playthrough challenges, you'll know that the wall of flesh battle can go one of two ways for me. Number one, we could defeat the wall of flesh first try and actually get a response to the dryad in our text messages for once. Or we can get an atomic wedgie from the wall of flesh so unbelievably fucking hard that we could taste our own underwear 600 times in a row. We truly only have one way to find out. So we make an arena in hell and upgrade and reforge our gear after grinding out several more queen peas for some cash money moolah. With this, I believe believe it's safe to say that we are ready, or at least as ready as we could possibly be for the final battle with the Wall of Fleshlight. What will it be, ladies and gentlemen? A response from our 37 text messages we send to the Dryad every day, or Atomic Wedgie so hard it absorbs into our body? Any predictions? Hmm? Any wacky little daring guesses? God damn it! It's gonna be another one of these playthroughs. Fuck! Alright, round two, baby. What could go wrong, right? It's about persistence. Persistence is key in any endeavor you may partake in, so yeah, get excited. Feel eager for the future and go out there and win, you little rascals. Do not get excited for anything. I take back everything I said. Don't even go outside. There's nothing but disappointment and rage to course through your veins no matter what you decide to do. God. Damn it! Ah yes, King Slime has spawned in. You know what? This feels good. Actually succeeding at something in my life is a new and tasty feeling for me and I enjoy it very much. You know what? Perhaps this is the confidence boost we needed to sack that life-sized wall of fleshlight. Let's go down there and ass blast this son of a bitch. King Slime taught us that we can do it! We are so fucking close. We are so fucking close. Come on. I can no longer feel a thing. Not feeling anything at all is a healthier and even better alternative compared to what we would be feeling after an ungodly loss like this. Fuck my life. I'm back to feeling again after that one and I've gone through every single stage of grief in innumerable amount of times. And I'll certainly be taking this out on my future wife and kids if they ever utter the words wall and flesh in the same sentence. I will fucking snap. This is when I get to thinking. I definitely need to worry about my spacing versus the wall of flesh a lot more. Either I'm too close or I'm too far. Are. We can mend my neighbor's fractured hearing state later. We have bigger and better things to worry about like succulent, succulent goddamn game progression. We charge back into hell with a head full of steam and summon up the wall of fleshlight. This is truly the moment of truth. We put our pro gamer strategy into practice and begin stabbing the ever loving fuck out of the wall directly into its eyeball. We maintain our distance, not too close, however not too far either. So we can still dish out as much damage as humanly possible to this behemoth. As its health deteriorates, so does its regard for how fast humans can actually run. And it begins going going full 100% freak out meltdown mode, pushing forward with unreasonable speed and momentum. We make sure to run off occasionally to take some time to heal up and eventually, to my absolute disbelief, yet again we manage to chip away its health down to nothingness and we watch with great pride the wall of fleshlight turning into nothing but a pile of fleshlight. I am in complete and utter shock at this point so we do what we do best and don't ask any questions. Collect the loot and strive forward toward beautiful goddamn game progression. Without wasting a second we charge directly directly into the crimson and start smashing all the altars to unlock the new hard mode ores that'll certainly be needed to defeat the mechanical bosses. We get cobalt, mithril, and adamantite. Every fucking time. No matter, however, our sexual prowess will hopefully get us past the mechanical bosses, but certainly, certainly not any further than that. Or will it? There's only one way to find out. By going on epic gamer or collection duty, we slowly but surely work our way up the various tiers of ores, going from cobalt to mithril and lastly to adamantite. After a very long session of epic gamer or collection duty, we go back up and make ourselves full adamantite armor as well as do something I don't think I've ever done in my entire life. Make an adamantite glaive, which brings our spearing power from 
a wimpy limp weenie 29 to a rock solid gargantuan and beastly 38. This jump in power is much needed, don't get me wrong, but I still, for some odd reason, am in great fear over how in the goddamn fuck we are going to take on mechanical death machines designed to inflict the most amount of pain possible on our gamer bodies with a fucking knife attached to a stick. I again digress, we need to prepare for the future battles to come. One step in preparation is allowing the trouble to move in so we could get a mushroom spear after we managed to murder one of the mechanical bosses in cold blood. That will truly ignite our spear power as it'll be one of the first we could get that can actually be slightly more ranged. Having that said, we lay down the future side of this Giga Chad's home and wait for the mushroom grass to spread. Suddenly, however, pirates with a 94% chance of having hepatitis spawn in, trying to give us smooches and we will take no part in that whatsoever. So we throw on five layers of condoms for an extra boost to our armor and run over to our coward pyramid in order to wait the event out. From here, ironically enough, it is quite uneventful. We just wait and chill to the maximum. After this, we work on some more housing and pirates decide to invade again for some odd reason, then we hollow out a large area for our future mechanical boss arena and deck it out with several layers of platforms. Right after we hit our platforms in hell and run back and forth about 10 million thousand billion times in order to kill off mimics to get their juicy loot and fashion ourselves the much needed star cloak as well as the charm of myths. With not that much luck in hell, we hollow out a separate area in the underground to get a bit more luck with mimics spawning in. We collect all of our components, reforge the ever-loving fuck out of them, then head over to summon up the destroyer. I must admit to you all, taking on a sentient mechanical cock sleeve with a sharpened stick does not seem ideal, but here we are nonetheless. We try poking the destroyer at an angle where we hit multiple segments multiple times at once, and it actually works a lot better than I thought. Don't get me wrong, we're doing damage equivalent to if we were to try and defeat a rhinoceros with a plastic fork, but having that said, it's quite consistent. Unfortunately, however, while trying to take out a couple of the world's most pesky probes, we are sneak attacked by the cock sleeve's head, which unfortunately, again for us, does the most amount of damage out of all of its segments in various attacks. We die ridiculously fucking hard. Having that said, this isn't entirely a loss, as we were very close to an epic gamer dub, so now we know for a fact that victory is in fact within our grasp in this battle. An efficient, slow, extraordinarily dangerous, but certainly within our grasp. While it may be dangerous, danger is my middle name, so we summon him up yet again and begin poking him with our glorified sharpened stick. This time, however, paying very close attention to where he's planning on sneaking up on us on the minimap. We try to deal with the probes as much as possible so they don't overwhelm us, and if we do need to take a hit, we try and take it over the cock sleeve so that the stars from our star veil rain down from the high heavens onto his fat metal worm body, slowly but surely, emphasis on slowly, giving ourselves ample room to run and heal. We manage to take his health down to specs and then meticulously disembowel him, procuring our first epic gamer dub in hard mode. What a fucking relief. Oh my god. We immediately run over to the truffle, realize we don't have enough money after all of our reforging, sell half of our earthly belongings, then get ourselves the mushroom spear. Boosting our power from 38 to a whopping 60, a tremendous power leap, even without considering the fact that the mushroom spear leaves spores in its trail, giving us a pretty decent decent way to slightly range attack the future bosses. Let's try it out on the destroyer to get some cool armor, shall we? Oh yeah, mushroom spear to the fucking dome, stupid worm boy. Nothing can stop it. Okay. Another cool spear we can get is called the Ghastly Glaive, which is a drop from the Ogre mini boss in Eternia Crystal. I'm fairly confident that you could all guess what comes next. If you guessed, attempt doing the Old Ones Army event and inevitably die before even the fifth round can start resulting in us giving up and questioning every single decision we've ever made in our entire lives, then you're goddamn correct. God. Damn it! <laughs> I guess that leaves us with challenging the twins with our mushroom spear. We summon them right up and, that's right, you guessed it, barely get a hit in and get our salads tossed by two gigantic eyeballs with an infatuation for lighting humans on fire. I am going to implode. You know what, that's okay, we have to utilize the rage and hatred for the mechs that lie within our hearts. And what better way to do that than to challenge the metallic shit dumpster also known as Skeletron Prime. Equipped with four weaponized arms and a spiked head for impaling his victims for literally no reason at all, what can possibly go wrong? The answer is, not that much actually. This fight is actually going swimmingly. We take him on over the asphalt runway we made for the Old Ones Army event and are able to dodge a lot of its attacks quite efficiently. It is here that I discover I could run at the speed of sound while spamming the mushroom spear, leaving a trail of spores to decimate our enemy. With this in mind, we fly around and run at supersonic speeds down the hallways of our college in order to impress our crush, which doesn't really seem to care about our sick ass speed for a reason that no one in this world can even begin to comprehend, and chip away at his health efficiently. We go directly directly for that big ass forehead and ignore his pathetic arsenal of arms and eventually after quite some time pissing our pants, chip away his health into nothingness. Last but not least we have the twins so we sleep the day away and summon them up the next night employing our strategy we used with Prime and it works surprisingly well, especially when the rat bastards decide to dash. We take out spasmatism first right in front of Retinator who has no mouth to scream and get help and no opposable thumbs to call the police with, which is greatly, greatly convenient for our cause. Eventually with enough dodging and running we manage to take out the twins 
Legends as well, giving us the trifecta of epic mechanical gamer dubs. Traditionally speaking, I never have trouble with the twins, so instead of celebrating our victory, we lie in bed, wait for Chlorophyte to spread, and question who we really are as a person. After that soul-crushing endeavor, we move on to a whole different type of soul-crushing endeavor in the shape and form of grinding for life roots and chlorophyte. We collect as much as humanly possible, then run right back up to our crack den in order to craft up some yummy yummy delicious chlorophyte armor, giving us a substantial boost not only to our defense but our power as well. We also take the time to make ourselves a chlorophyte partisan, which again not only can shoot spore clouds when used but boosts our power from 60 to 49? Having that said, it's not about the initial power, it's about its DPS, and the chlorophyte partisan can give a lingering spore cloud to toss our enemies with many times before disappearing. So in our case, we're going to have to make use of both weapons. Up next, we have my favorite boss, Plantera, which is our favorite not only for her absolute banger of a theme, not only for her voluptuous and captivating curves, not only for her being a MILF, but also for the fact that she unlocks the Frostmoon event, which has the chance to drop us the final weapon of this playthrough, the ultimate spear, which we'll have to use to decimate the big man Calamari Moon Squid himself, the North Pole. Having this said, we grind out the remainder of the life fruits we need deck out a very large arena with platforms and buffs and summon her on up. I am in great, great fear of this battle, not only because she's a tough boss, but also because I spent about three centuries trying to find a bulb and would rather die in real life than do that tedious task ever again. In this battle, the first phase was quite simple. We just circle around her, trying not to be seduced to no avail, doing as much damage as we possibly can with our chlorophyte partisan. The second phase, however, was enough to make me piss and shit so hard that it blasted a hole through my keyboard, desk, and epic gamer chair. Having that said, what the part of being shot from our weapons we're able to maintain a somewhat safe distance from the world's angriest leafy milf which is extraordinarily beneficial to us. We keep our distance letting the spores do their work as she runs into them and eventually procure what appears to be and correct me again if I'm wrong but yet another epic gamer victory royale. We open her loot bag which contains everything that we can't even fucking use in the name of the premise of this godless playthrough and charge directly over to the lizard temple which in this playthrough resembles ridiculous snapchat story advertisements that you never watched but notice slightly when trying to look at your friend's stories. I'm sure it goes without saying, but we needed to destroy this temple entirely because those things are a fucking nightmare beyond any belief. The first tier consists of the ridiculous clickbait articles about celebrities who haven't really done anything drastic at all. You won't believe what Ryan Reynolds did to this McDonald's cashier! <gasps> Yes. Yes, Ryan Reynolds asked for a McChicken and a sweet tea at McDonald's. God, I fucking hate these articles so much. The next tier resembles the story articles that try to be as sexual as possible even though the thing that's happening is quite mundane. Her boyfriend told her she needs to do these at the gym. <laughs> yes, doing squats and hitting leg day is something that everyone should be doing. How is this news? How How is this surprising at all? I swear to God, I am losing my fucking mind. We are nearly to the temple when the worst random Snapchat story article pops up of all. Worst of all, in public while other people are looking at our phones. We burst into the final room of the temple and see that Gollum is a half-nude man posing in the mirror, flexing until he's about to pass out but trying to make it look natural and casual. With no story title, just his stupid influencer name. And his snap caption? New haircut. <laughs> what y'all doing? I'm gonna freak out. I don't need to see this when I'm trying to look at my friend's fucking snapchat stories. It is clear, apparent, and very obvious that Gollum must die for his heinous crime, so we set up an arena instantly. However, even being in maximum rage mode, his outrageous caption and our confusion as to how in the blue fuck he got there in the first place gets the best of us and we perish under his cringe twice, which makes us even more ferocious beyond measure. He must fall, so we try one last time, barely scraping by, taking immense damage from the immense amount of cringe we feel based off of his posts and how much money he probably paid to get there in the first first place and eventually, by a fucking thread, we manage to defeat him. Thank God. We fight him one more time just for safe measure to make sure he can never, ever taint our social media platforms again and come out victorious, screaming to the sun with a Hyper Sigma Gamer Warrior chant. In order to prepare for the Moon Lord, we still have a handful of things to do. We have to get a cute Fishburn mount by defeating Dick Pissrin. We must defeat Ice Queen from the Frost Moon event and hope she drops us our final spear, the North Pole. Defeat the Discord admin cultists, the positively wacky pillars and we also have to make other small preparations to our accessories, landscape, and gear in order to procure our final epic gamer victory in this Spears only run. Having this said, we charge right over to the beach and set up a Dick Pissrin arena in order to beat him for our game busting mount. I'm clearly in great fear as Dick Pissrin hits harder than a drunken father dual wielding belts who came home to no dinner being made for him. Having this said, we use a truffle worm we found earlier and summon him on up. The first and second phases really aren't too bad. It's simply dodging perpendicular to where he's dashing, leaving a trail of spores in our wake for him to run into. 
However, the third phase is a fucking nightmare because this elephant's foot mutated pigfish can teleport through space and time simply to disembowel us, and we perish nearly instantly as soon as he gains this power. God. Damn it! This whole entire playthrough has been one long, grotesque fever dream that I'll certainly never forget. I will have nightmares about spears for the rest of the time I'm here on Earth. Realizing we have literally no shot at Dick Pissroom without a better weapon, we hit the dungeon in hopes of getting plenty of ectoplasm in order to create the summon for the Frost Moon in order to obtain the North Pole. Needless to say, we die a lot. Eventually, however, we squeak out a big, soggy handful of ectoplasm and summon the Frost Moon up. I'm really not one for trying to do these events at all, so I had no real strategy my first run so we die only about 6,000 times trying to defeat the bigger bosses cowering in our NPC's housing so we don't get hit and manage to get hit and die anyway somehow the event ends and we do not get a taste of a fucking ice queen this is going to be very very interesting wacko mode warning alert wacko mode warning alert our next attempt we actually strategize and make a small box above our coward pyramid decked with buffs just in range so the particles from our spear can hit a lot of the mobs progressing the event much faster we still somehow manage to die a lot but our spawn is set in this box, making our lives a little bit easier. Eventually, our Ice Queen spawns and we take her up to our asphalt platform and surprise are doing little to no fucking damage at all. And before we know it, the event ends and the Ice Queen just disappears with our epic spear. I am losing my fucking marbles. Losing them, I tell you. Our next attempt, we use traps from the temple in order to expedite our progress in the event. Get nothing. Try Duke Fishing again. Die at quite literally the exact same spot. Grow out our hair again and rip it out about three to five separate times. Try the event again and get absolutely nothing. Thing. Any shred of sanity I had going into this playthrough has been completely disintegrated and surely will not be returning. Oh, look at that! Christmas wings! Wow! God damn it! I don't care! We, we need the fucking... We need the fucking North Pole! We try again, get another Ice Queen to spawn and she just decides to leave again. Why? 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 We try the event again and get another Ice Queen, get absolutely mocked by her, get another one and die again. No form of occupational or home therapy for that matter can bring me back from where this event is putting me mentally currently. We finally get an Ice Queen that sticks around, defeat her, and what do we get? A fucking blizzard staff. Oh my god, I, I'm fucking losing it. It's it's too late for me. We go again, die to an Ice Queen again, die to an Ice Queen again, 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 again. Kill one and get literally nothing from it. Why? Die again 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 try the event again die again 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 when suddenly holy fucking shit we managed after about a thousand attempts and what felt to be hundreds of hours of my life utterly and entirely wasted to get ourselves a north pole spear i am numb to any and all sensations after that absolute hell we just went through that was that was fucked holy and entirely fucked and so was our emotional well-being so what do we do with that go to therapy yeah fucking right we have game progress to tend to and there's not a goddamn thing on this green earth that's gonna stop us from completing this playthrough after that we quickly reforged and charged directly over to the beach to battle dick piston again i realized in this battle that with the north pole a direct attack can certainly be seen as inefficient as it rains down snowflakes onto our enemies so the best shot is firing it directly upwards casting down a barrage of horrendous insults on this fish pig that would certainly certainly Without a doubt in my mind, get this video demonetized instantaneously. We die in Duke's third phase again, stomping on any sort of hope we may have built from getting a spear in the first place. But we see we did get a teeny tiny bit closer than usual, which keeps our spark going. We must use the marbles we lost against the enemy. Stay focused, my brothers and sisters. We must defeat mutant pigfish who can teleport. We have another go at him, dodging his various dashes, shark blasts, and bubble baths. Since we are gamers and we do not bathe ourselves, whether our mothers like it or not, his third phase phases where a clutch occurs that I have literally no words to explain. Never in my life have I seen a clutch of this caliber. I'm not even going to say anything. Just watch this shit and you'll feel precisely what I felt. Uh, holy fucking shit. We beat him. North fucking pole, baby. Holy shit. I am entirely and absolutely baffled as we haul ass back to the beach in order to collect our spoils we died so much for. With that absolutely insano mode clutch from the good graces of the North Pole Spear, we have nothing left stopping us from conquering this spear's only playthrough except for the cultists, the pillars, and the wacko moon squid calamari man himself. Having this said, we lug our juicy asses over to the cultists' discord and immediately begin flirting with their e-women. They ever so humble 
commonly refer to as their kittens. This is where we find that the North Pole can certainly be less than optimal in situations like these when a stray snowflake hits the false cultist and we pay the price for it in the form of being eaten by a fucking ghost dragon. Everything in this godforsaken land is a trial and tribulation that takes a month to overcome. I've already ripped out all of my hair several times, my eyebrows are next, and if things don't go smoothly very soon, I will be an entirely aerodynamic, smooth, hairless abomination that lurks in the shadows. We go back and flirt with their discord kittens again in order to infuriate the headmaster admin enough to battle us again. We use the chlorophyte partisan to evade his bands, direct message him plenty of times to keep the beef going because we're soulless entities with nothing better to do, and eventually, with a sliver of luck, manage to have his entire discord taken down for the betterment of humanity. However, this unleashes the pillars, which we must dispatch immediately. Oh good heavens, they all take the shape of modern day cringy walking beings. We first go for the good guy stardust pillar, ignore the various girls just don't like good guys like me anymore. Remarks it tells us, defeat it, then hit the loud in public as comedy solar pillar. Die a lot because they keep screaming their phone number at the retail worker just trying to do their job. Defeat it, then go immediately for the quote unquote crazy nebula pillar who gives us pneumonia just from looking at it because in order to hold up its status as the craziest fucking person ever, they'll do crazy, crazy, so wacky things like roll around on the floor of a grocery store in front of people trying to shop while you're with them. Needless to say, we defeat it as fast as possible in order to save face from public embarrassment and charge directly for the last pillar, the fuckboy vortex pillar. As soon as we get there, we're greeted with the most volatile dialogue we've ever heard in our entire lives. Haha, <laughs> fuck, what are you doing all the way out here in my pillar? I'm acting a fool for real. Defeat it with our ears plugged and our eyes closed. Then prepare to have our asses handed to us on a silver platter by the god of calamari. Get our asses handed to us on a silver platter by the god of calamari, then simply wait until it rains. With our beetle armor we made after Gollum, the best spear we can get and some kick-ass accessories I am safely assuming this will go at least decently. As soon as it starts raining, we use one of our sigils to summon up the moon lord and promptly begin getting our asses handed to us yet again. This is a nightmare which I thought would go much better because as soon as we teleport back to the nurse to heal, she spontaneously combusts. What a perfect time to just fucking explode when I have two hearts left and an eldritch deity chasing me who would absolutely love to see me in several pieces. God damn it! We have no choice but to wait until it rains yet again, wait for our nurse to spawn in and summon the moon lord up again, hopefully for the last time. We buff up as he spawns in and take to the skies, praying this time will go well. As we've used the last of our components on this sigil and would certainly take a bite out of our keyboard and monitor if we had to do the pillars again. The beginning of this fight goes somewhat decently. We keep our distance, chucking the north pole in his direction so the flakes fall onto his various eyeballs, and teleport back whenever we need to heal. One thing to quickly note about this fight is that it is just fucking taking forever. We're doing enough damage to where he won't be able to heal but not enough damage to take him out in an efficient enough amount of time to feel comfortable in my own skin. We fly around his forehead beam and try to do as much damage as possible to his top eye because the less gargantuan fucking death beams that fly at us, the better. Eventually with many heals and health potions being chugged in a similar manner to Badlands chugs himself, we manage to take out all of his eyes and his heart is exposed to impale 500,000 times so as to do a little tiny bit of damage on. With some extraordinarily goddamn close calls, we manage to healthily chip away at the health of his heart, dodging the disgusting amount of beams and eyeballs flying towards us, healing when needed and zooming back and forth as far as we can from the angry calamari man so we don't die in two hits. His health gets lower and lower, we throw our spear as hard as possible, until eventually he begins to disintegrate into flames, then promptly into nothing but a pile of bones, indicating to me that we have managed to crush this final boss with nothing but a spear in this unholy spears only playthrough. At this point, I am utterly and entirely lost on how we made it this far so we do exactly exactly what we did in the last playthrough and go absolutely fucking feral in celebration without thinking of the treacherous events we had to slug through in order to beat this challenge. We bask in our victory going absolutely fucking feral that we no longer have a spears only playthrough to attend to. Having that said, having defeated the moon lord I believe that just about concludes today's challenge. Today we managed to conquer Terraria in master mode with only spears and I'm sure it goes without saying that no amount of therapy could ever make me forget the great frost moon incident of 2022. This video did take a very long time to make so if you'd like to show your support, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content like this as well as comment down in the comment section below and let me know your guys' thoughts on this video. I always, always love to hear from you guys. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to join the Discord as well as follow that Instagram and Twitter. They're all fantastic for having a chat with myself or the lovely community, conversing, and knowing about future updates for future videos and content coming very soon to this channel. Every single one of those links are down in the description for your very own convenience. Thank you all so, so much again for watching and I'll catch all you little rascals on the flip side. Waffle time, Spear Master Edition out.